when he changed the language at Babylon and confounded man. Man was divided and he was dispersed throughout the world and unity was lost. The true conception of God was lost and man began to form gods made, made in his own image and clothed in his own passion. And indeed, St. Paul tells us very clearly what that state was like, what that state had become at the time of the advent of the Messiah. He says in his letter to the Romans, for the wrath of God was revealed from the heaven against all ungodliness and injustice of those men that detain the truth of God in injustice, because that which is known of God is manifest in them. For God hath manifested it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, his eternal power also and divinity, so that they are inexcusable. Because, because that, when they knew God, they have not glorified him as God or given thanks, but became vain in their thoughts, and their foolish heart was doctrine. For professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and they changed the glory of the incorruptible God into the likeness of the image of a corruptible man, and of birds, and of four-footed beasts, and of creeping things. Wherefore God gave them up to the desires of their heart, unto uncleanness, to dishonor their own bodies among themselves, who changed the truth of God to earth unto a lie, and worshiped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. And so, St. Paul gives us that true understanding of human history, and hence we begin to understand our deep and profound need for a redeemer. For God, from the beginning, had concealed himself from man so that man might again seek the God of his true origins. He was hidden. But today we celebrate a mystery, a mystery that is truly beyond our comprehension, a mystery that was the root and core of every saint within the mystical body. For today God opens the doors of his concealment as he comes to take possession of his kingdom, his creation. Man in the Virgin Mary seeks God through all the horror of the human history, the Virgin seeks the restoration of the fallen human family. And so, it is really Our Lady who sought God in His concealment. It is really Our Lady who preserved the whole hope of humanity on that faithful night when in prayer she was praying as she always had from the moment of her conception for the advent of the Savior, and he would come to her. And so, it is to her also that we must turn, always remembering that the observation of God is of immense importance to our sanctification. Today, we observe God in the mystery of the Nativity. What is it that we observe? We observe Saint Joseph, a man, unlike any saint, that the world had seen up to the time. We observe the Blessed Virgin Mary. She was above all saints, the first in the hierarchy of God's creatures, the Queen of Heaven and the predestined mother of God himself. Within her womb, nestled just under the mother's heart, is the incarnate word, God himself, the maker and true sovereign of all gathered in Bethlehem this night and scattered throughout the world until the end of time. The actual and true judge of every soul dwelling there in Bethlehem, every soul that had come before them, every soul that had come after them. The true judge is, is there this night in Bethlehem. But there is no room for them at the inn or anywhere in the village. For the imperial offices and the rich visitors gain the hospitality and the best accommodations the town has to give and to offer. For a poor carpenter, a young mother, and in a hidden word, there would be no room. Not a word of protest, not a single angel is sent to defend the Holy Family. They remain silent, and they accept their poverty. They accept the inhospitality. They are exiled outside of the city of David, the city of Bethlehem exiled to a cave, 
But for God, he is no exile. For quite literally in his depravity, man had descended into the very caves, the very bowels of the earth. In the daily world, from these places, oracles would come forth. Oracles giving the daily people the wisdom to bring peace to their culture. But we know from faith, there was no wisdom really given, for it was merely devils hiding themselves behind human masses, drawing humanity deeper and deeper and deeper into the depravity. The cult of Pan would have the forefront, and indeed, it would be before one of these very temples that God would promise to St. Peter the keys of the kingdom, that kingdom that he comes to begin to conquer that this night, that kingdom in which the Son of God will descend into the very bowels of the earth so that men may learn not to fear him because he does not come as the kings of this earth. He comes as a king beyond our comprehension and beyond our understanding. God makes no noise this night. He calls no angelic choirs to come to his defense, to come to the defense of his mother, to come to the defense of his earthly father. And the world ignores him. It is his fault, the world will say, and future generations will declare. For he gave no sign of power this night that would substantiate his claim to be the king of the universe. No, he gave no sign of power, and he will give no sign of power in his age of mercy. Because it is not by power that he came to manifest, but love is what he came to manifest in Bethlehem. And Bethlehem, because it is a manifestation of God's love, is also a harbinger of Calvary. He would not be allowed to die a natural death. He came into this world in such a mean state. Our sins would eventually trample the life out of him. He will be seen as tiresome and reproachable by mankind a dishonorable and ignominious man, and no word of protest will escape his mouth, his mouth, not as he is wrapped in swaddling clothes, nor as he is impaled on Calvary. He will rule in this world by his love, and in so doing, he will bring all the powers of this world to their knees, and each and every soul. For all will be judged in order that how they have responded to this mystery of Christmas. The world has again become an inhospitable place for the Christ child. He will not smite it with his power, but will try to win it over and over and over and over again by his love. That mystery that is to be revealed to the world in his mystical body. We are to go forth and show the world the love of Christ show the world the mystery of Christmas. And so, as we begin to enter into this mystery, let us always, let it allow it to be a mystery that truly transforms our lives. For we must always observe God. And in the Christ child, we can observe, observe God and at the same time observe man. That is, it is Christ who teaches us how to be authentically human how to use all the things of this world for the glory of God. And so, as we begin, we are reminded by one of those dear and profound Christmas hymns. We are reminded of this mystery in a profound way. And we must always have the question on our lips and in our hearts. What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Whom angels greet and with anthem sweet, while shepherds watch our keeping. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds God and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. Why lies he in such an estate, where ox and ass are feeding? Could Christians fear, or sin is here, the silent word is pleading. Nails, spear, shall pass him through, the cross be born for me, for you. Hail, hail, the word made flesh, the babe, the son of Mary. 
So breathing incense, gold and bitter, come peasant king to own him. The king of kings salvation brings, let loving thoughts control him. Raise, raise the song on high, the virgin sings for lullaby. Joy, joy, for Christ is born, the babe, the son of Mary, and all is well with the world, and all will be well with the world until the end of time, because God has truly touched us in the mystery of his incarnation and the mystery of Christmas, and we can observe God from infancy until death, and from him learn how to worship and to praise our good God. And so, let us turn this day especially, commending the human family to the care of the Holy Family, so that again, the world may be humbled in its quest for power by the love of God made man and manifested on Christmas Day for our sake, so that all power may be exercised according to the good of the human family and the salvation of souls.